Bonjour, mon ami. This, uh, today we're going to talk about um, SAS, SCSS, and we're going to talk about the mapget function. So um, it's a way of getting a variable and passing lots of results to it, and then choosing from the map of that variable, basically. So um, let's just talk you through it. I'll just take you to my um, code pen. Uh, so, uh, first of all, please subscribe. Don't forget, I know we say at the end, and probably people don't remember because they turn it off by that point. But please subscribe, it really helps me uh, to keep making these videos and tell me if there's anything you want to hear about. So, here's my code pen. So, you can see here I've got this variable green. So, so we're in SCSS, and we've got dollar green to start a variable, and we've got a colon. And then instead of just writing an answer, we've got um, some brackets, basically, normal brackets. And then with each result, we uh, we can do effectively the same as the variable. So we put in quotes, we put the name, a colon, and then the result, and then a comma. And we do that as many times as we want. And you can see we've done it with shade as well. Uh, and it's this is the result, basically. So, so uh, when you hover, things get a little darker or lighter, depending on where you go. Um, and now I'll show you how we achieve that. So we've got a mix in. And we're doing the background color, and we're telling it that we need to work out the color and then the shade. Uh, and this uh, background, we're doing map get, so we're saying map get color and shade. So if we go back up here, we'll see that we've got a color green. It's not called color, so you'll notice that at first. But um, we've got one called shade, which is called shade. So uh, if we look at this on the uh, on the HTML side, um, you'll see that I've just done a class light light, light medium, light dark, and medium light, medium light, medium dark. And this is kind of inspired by um, this Tailwind CSS and their color palette, uh, which I think is amazing. And um, they basically have nine for each color. So they really have a lot of choice if they want to do something a bit darker or lighter. Really great. If you're a developer and you, you don't like designing and color schemes and stuff, that's all done for you. So it's pretty useful. So that's why I came up with this little idea. So it's basically showing all nine colors and slightly different hover states. Um, so if we look uh, as we go down, we will find that we've got uh, the class is green because we've put a green on the HTML. And uh, we get to the first one. So this one we've done is green and it's also got the class light light. So you can see on the left in the HTML, it's green. Oh, God, I don't want to do that. It's green. And it's got class lights light. And then we've got a, a light light hover as well. And all we've done is the color. And this time we've done colon because we're doing background color. So if you remember, this was our mixin. So here, background color. And we know that the mixin takes two variables, color and shade. And then it just tells it map get color and shade. So in this instance, we have um, done background color for our mixin. Then we've done the dollar color equals. And this time we've done green. So we've added a variable there. And the shade, we've done light light. So um, obviously, we've given it the class light light. So we've decided to give it that shade as well. And then on hover, it's medium light. So if you look, at this uh, will be an easier way for you to understand that. This was what light is, light, 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 medium, light, hard, dark, and then medium, light, medium, dark, dark, light, medium, dark. So that's kind of the process I followed here. And so if we go back up here, you will see light, light, light medium, light, dark, and I've given them all a uh, value. And then the shade, we've given a color as well, um, a value as well. Um, so you can see that's how I've used my mixing. Background color, so I've just done the color and I've said green. So then, if I wanted to do the same again with red, I could put a variable red and I could map out those colors, and then the shade is light, light. So, um, in this instance, you will see uh, that it's just got a name basically. So, we've managed to uh, assign this name here to here. So, uh, in, in the future, say I wanted to make a red one, I would just make the, the color red. I don't need to do the shade again because the shade's already here. So if I did say um, a red one here, in fact, let's start on a new line, it makes more sense. Uh, and then I do, I need my brackets. And then I'm obviously going to be just as easy to copy and paste that. So I will. Uh, and that, although it has the wrong color values, at least it has the right name values. So then it's pretty quick and easy for me to get the red ones and uh, just copy and paste them over. It's not the most interesting thing to watch someone do, but I'll just do it quickly. And you'll see that the whole point of this is that at any point I can uh, easily change the colors or something uh, 
and it's real useful when you're uh, you should have like a style guide basically so when you have a style guide it's set by the designer normally they are able to define what good colors look like and then the coders necessarily don't have to do that it saves them a lot of hassle but you might find that you're doing a real dark background and you need a really light color rather than just using white you have this option to use these colors here which is sort of uh, like an off red but it's, it's still like the lightest one is still kind of white it's off white but it's still got the the red theme to it so there you go that's my red done now so now if i was to go um if i just change i'll just change this one to red and this one let's see which one that is should change did it change it's uh, weird why didn't it change so light dark so it should be this one it's not changed hmm What's going on there? Color is red. Great tutorial. I haven't put the. There you go. Okay, so now you can see that much changed to red. It's missing a semicolon. Um, so as you can see, if we was to have all of these colors in there. Um, you would find that it would be really easy just to change your different components to have slightly different color um, and then it's really easy to quite often you would find that you might have um, say for example if I had um, a H2 here and I might say uh, H2 heading and I might have a H3 here Subheading. So quite often you would see something along the lines of, uh, okay, we'll take that out of the div. Uh, oh no, I probably need it in the div actually, don't I? Okay, so um, so often you see something along the lines of this. So if I just style up my my H2 a little bit. Um, and I say H2 font size 3 RM, width padding of 0.5 RM, and then um, my H3, I do margin 0, and then I do a uh, font size 0.8 RM, and then I do padding 0 as well. But I do margin bottom 0 on this. So now you can see that uh, the heading doesn't actually need to be, uh, that one doesn't need to be so heavy, right? So we could make that maybe 300, does it work? Depends what font we're using. And then this one, uh, this one could also be a little less heavy, because um, it's kind of thick and heavy and chunky, doesn't need to be. But so say we make the the top one could be 200, so it'd be really thin, but it's bigger, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't work with this one. Okay, we'll leave it at 300. Um, the point is now, now the bottom one. Let's do this as a. Um, oh, it's got a background color. We could. So if we was to do another mix in, we could do a uh, normal color basically. So let's do that, and then we'll just do color, um, and we'll just call that color. So now if we get our H2. And we'll just uh, include our mix in, and we'll make that color. We'll make that. Um, that's just that looks. We'll change that, and we'll make that um, green, and we'll make that uh, medium light because it's bigger. It doesn't need the same the same weight, if you see what I mean. And then if we do this for the H3, whereas that is a bit smaller. We would probably make that a bit darker, or else it becomes harder to see. So, if you can see, this is like a, a real easy way to start um, making a real style guide and really uh, help your designers and developers to do things without having to think too much, um, rather than remembering their uh, hrefs or, or their RGB colors, which is a bit of an annoying thing to do. If you have this map get, you can just say, look, I want it to be a bit darker. Okay, I need the medium dark. Oh, it's still not dark enough. Okay, I need the dark dark. So um, in doing it, it's more of a 
more of a sensible naming convention it makes it real easy for you to understand what the result is going to be uh, you know it's going to be green and you know it's going to be some level of darkness and it's really easy to tweak it to be lighter or darker you can't go wrong you don't all start using different variants of green you don't end up with a hundred different um, you know, green colors you just have the designer set them at the beginning and there's enough choice that you can fit any any sort of result so if we was now to say like some of these uh, I, I was saying at the beginning you might not necessarily want white so on the ultra dark one if I was to do dark dark and then if I do my includes and then I go uh, light light on that one you can see that even though it's not white it's, it's an off-white but it just fits in a little bit more uh, and this one again it's a hover and it goes dark light so perhaps we would go for light medium on that one so let's see what it looks like so there you go you can see that if that was uh, on the on the normal one it probably would look a bit offish because it would be slightly too dark it starts to lose its um, contrast and because of that you might run into accessibility problems so uh, that's how you might use it it's, it's not just colors you can do it for it's a map it's just a map of uh, variables within a variable so you could use that for padding you might have big small you know big medium small for padding or margin or um, pretty much anything really um, anyway, I hope that helps. I hope that helps you to understand MapGet. I hope that helps you to think of ways that you can use it. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to follow us on uh, all of our social media. So we've got um, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. And if you have any comments, please do comment. Tell me what you want to hear about. Tell me what, uh, what I missed out on this article, what I could have explained better. Um, thanks for listening.